What's up guys, figured I'd get an update on the shag wagon here. It's been a bit and kind of just do an overall walk around since I see a lot of people asking about what it is. So it's a 1979 um, Jeep Wagoneer Limited, right? So this was the go-to SUV, I guess, the family car of the time. Um, this one's an, the 360, so the 5.9 liter. Uh, AMC 360 with the TH400 transmission and the Berg Warner 1339 um, transfer case, which means it's all wheel drive. Uh, all, a lot of that's being changed here soon, but I'll just stick with what I got going on now. Um, so first off, um, took off the front bumper and just had one made or made one one weekend where I had some extra steel. Wasn't a fan of the uh, chrome style one and I wanted something that fit close because I had rust going on on the bottom side of the grill. So I got to cut it out and move this guy in, super flush. Once the shop actually moves to the new shop, I'll be cutting and remaking them. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, just kind of let me know and I can send it as a DIY where it's just steel or already done. But again, this one was just kind of a uh, head time one weekend and had scrap steel kind of thing. Um, I put in some LED headlights um super simple obviously brighter i have a video on what that is um biggest thing is going on so front axle it's still the stock low pinion uh 44 that came on it only difference is is i don't have leaf springs in the front i did coils um they're actually out of a 2018 jl two-door um, it's a three link in the front upper control arm is made um, With some bungs and rock crawler rod ends that I had the lower control arms are Actually synergy Jeep JL ones the Lower control arm brackets on the frame side are actually leaf spring brackets um, that I had saved for my Willys project um, So like I said I did this spontaneously one weekend again so I used what I had. Uh, it's all gonna get redone here with actual different brackets. Um, but it's just super easy to do this stuff at home with things that you have if you need to make it work kind of thing. Um, there's a Curry Annie Rock or Rock Jock, whatever they changed their name to, um, sway bar. This is meant from a JK. It's a very similar width. Just needed a couple of spacers to clear the steering box. Steering box is a J20, so an upgraded steering box. Artec Industries track bar bracket. Um, that is a TerraFlex track bar that is just flipped backwards, clears the diff and everything. Um, my one ton, one and a half inch solid aluminum RPM steering that was custom made for my lengths and application. Fox 2.0 shocks. It's a JL steering stabilizer. Trying to think of anything else that's up here. That's about it here. Um, did a custom drive shaft because obviously the lengths change and such. Um, I dropped the actual transmission and transfer case about an inch and a half. So these are the stock bolts um, that were up here. So basically the top used to be there. Now the top's down here and lowered these guys down. What that did is help with my driveline angle for the front, because if you have these guys, you know that they just peek out real quick. Um, so that was my temporary fix. I am doing new front axles and that'll give me um, high pinion. So that'll give me the drive shaft angle kind of stuff. So if uh, switched and figured out there. Um, rear suspension, still the leaf spring, um, but it has spring over. So the front originally had a spring over when I bought it, if you remember. So I think a spring over gives you about six and a half to seven inches of lift overall. Um, front is sitting about an inch and a half lower than it did when I got it. So say for example, if a spring over gave you six and a half, I'm at five. Um, and these are 35s, Ridge Grapplers uh, with black Rhino wheels. And there is a wheel spacer because of the narrowed axle and those are three and a half inch back space. Uh, wheels. <laughs> My dogs are howling in the house. What's going on in there? Um, I 
But yeah, it actually drives fantastic. Um, coils make it drive super nice. And then the new steering, crossover steering and everything. I drive with one finger on the bottom of the steering wheel and that's about it. So that's super cool. Um, front is stretched about three inches. Hence why I have it trimmed right there, which was actually part of the plan because it was so rusted out right there. Why would I replace the panel when I can just do this, allow for more clearance. And then when I, over time, I'd like to fit a 37 under here and still be around the same height. Um, so that gives me more room to clear, to turn uh, and all that, especially with the high clearance bumper, it makes everything just kind of fit. Uh, the rockers were rusted out. So I did a two by three steel and basically cut all along the door, put some door trim that you can get from AutoZone right there and then welded uh, metal. So the steel all the way to it and then welded it to the frame. Um, so it can be used, the dogs are driving me crazy. Um, it can be used as a rock slider kind of concept. Um, have some rust going. I have a new dog leg piece to replace this, but my kind of overall plan is I'm gonna be linking the rear suspension as well. I'm gonna push that rear axle back probably three inches. Um, and I'll do the same concept as the front, right? I will go cut and trim right about, sorry, right about there. Um, and then I'm gonna build um, maybe eighth inch thick. I don't wanna do anything thick cause it's just more so sort of aesthetics. Um, armor that will be rib nutted there along that one, along that one, and it'll cover up that dent that's right there. So that's part of the plus. And along there, um, long term, I'd like to paint it, whether it's gonna be a Merlot paint or it's gonna be a uh, dark blue, more than likely. We'll see what happens. And then maybe I'll either A, paint match those, or B, maybe do a slightly darker color of whatever it's gonna be. Um, so if it's dark blue, I'll do a darker blue. If it's red, I'll do a darker red. Just because it's kind of like a little bit of an accent. Kind of like the two-tone that it is now. Um, but that'll get rid of the rust that's there. Then I'll weld and cover that in. Just because that does go um, into the cab there. Back bumper, still the same. Hitch, window, everything. Nothing changed there. Um, one thing with the rear, so I'm gonna triangulate the suspension, which means I won't need a track bar. I'm gonna do coils in the rear and I'll probably start again with JL coils. I'm trying to build everything with off the shelf stuff. So when I need to replace something or anything like that, I can get parts with the part number and not have to rebuild everything as I did. Um, and what allowed me to triangulate it is the rear gas tank is actually from a 97, I think it was a 97, 97 um, two door blazer, so S10 blazer um 18 gallons has the inline electric pump so no more anything on the outside and i know electric pumps are an upgrade to this so a uh, previous owner had put in an electric pump that was sitting along the frame right around there so this has everything built in keeps the pressure i need high clearance back here so here's one of the big things it hardly sticks down below the the hitch I'm gonna build an aluminum skid that goes down and over it and everything so it'll all be covered in time. But super nice that it gives me more space to really work with underneath here. Uh, once I do the axle swap and suspension and I'm gonna box in the frame, add a couple more cross members. But again, when I redo the rear suspension, I'm gonna be doing new axles. They're from a Gladiator. Um, I don't have them here. Um, or I'm gonna be doing ones from a JK. Depends on what width and what I kinda of wanna set up. The rear axle's offset, so it's actually gonna be, you know, centered, rear diff, a driver's side drop on the front. Um, in my transfer case, I'm actually switching with the 231, cause I have one. Already has fixed yokes and everything, cause I had an SYE done. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a, um, swapping the output shaft on the TH400 to a 23 spline because these Borg Warners use a 10 spline that, you know, it's like 10 inches long of output shaft. So it's annoying. Um, bear with me for a second here. Recently I did um, a Holley Sniper two barrel uh, electronic fuel injection. 
So that is like probably my favorite upgrade so far. I had a carburetor, the original one, and it was pouring gas and I didn't realize I bought it from the owner like that and he had been driving like that. So one day I come out, have it running and I look and it's just pouring gas all down the side here. So um, why do all the gaskets and rebuild it when you can get Motorcraft carbs? For like 230, 300 bucks my cost from like O'Reilly's and such, brand new. Um, so I went that route, used it for about a year and a half, and I was like, this is cool, but you know, I'd rather have fuel injection. Um, so I did that, because it's really not that expensive. Unreal difference. Starts up super easily, runs amazingly. Um, don't have to sit there and warm up or anything. I am slowly starting to upgrade. I have a new radiator that's on order, because this one actually did just start leaking. So um, the Jeep usually tells you when it's ready for new parts kind of thing. So once we kind of go through that, I'm just working my way to make it reliable and such. So got that going for me. Um, roof, it's in great condition. The whole paint is just patinaed. There's not actually anything that's like, I mean, aside from that area, which is all gonna be replaced, damaged, rusted out. So it just needs to be sanded down. It had the one trim that went chrome all the way across. So that's what that goop is. It's actually just glue. All that will come off interior so i pulled the pan the door panels they were in great condition um put black carpet along the bottom super easy to do if you're remotely inclined to do so yourself um cleaned up the leather it's all the original up here so it works why would i replace it if it's still great condition um new black all new speakers the dash is the same because that's more of a tedious process so i'm kind of doing that last if you know i'm gonna do new steering wheel here soon um, these seats that are in here are just some cheesy, I think, I can't remember if they're Smitty Build or Rugged Ridge, um, don't remember, but they are hard as a freaking rock. They are so uncomfortable, but they match, and my factory front seats had rips inside here, so I'm going to get them reupholstered. Um, and so these were just my temporary. The flooring was scuffed down entirely, bed lined, and then I put sound deadener all the way over it all the way through the flooring through the side doors the inner panels the roof everything is sound deadened um just got a little dash covered to help me not have to look at it previous owner put in an aftermarket head unit which usually means bashing a hole right here I hate that people do that um and then cut out and put some cheesy aftermarket ones so this is actually by retro uh, retro audio i think maybe was the name it's a factory style, so it's actually all electronic, Bluetooth, everything. Um, but it looks like the original. Super cool. Then I just have one of those Alpine little power pack units sitting kind of tucked back there. And it's powering all new Rockford Fosgate um, speakers. Um, new carpets. I'm going to do a center console and everything. Just kind of figuring out. You know, a lot of people use old Mountaineers or Ford Explorers, stuff like that kind of figuring out what I want to do be different um headliner I took the original headliner and put on a leather um diamond stitch that was my first time doing one I didn't scrape enough of the old one off so it started to kind of droop down from where I had glued on so that's what these little um pieces are to help hold it they twist into it like a screw and help stay. I'm actually gonna be taking all of that out. We're gonna be doing a corduroy style. So the new seats are gonna have a corduroy, corduroy uh, sorry, plaid, um, striping through it. I'm gonna do a dark brown leather. Has a subwoofer under the seat. It's just one of those little powered Alpine ones, which is perfect. Back seat's in fantastic condition. So to give you an idea of what we're going for, this is gonna be the plaid, and this will be the dark brown leather, because I love dark brown leather. Um, gonna be redoing that to the same plaid i'm gonna figure out what i want to do for the lights because the back one's just hanging out because there wasn't one in here and i like the original style but i want something updated especially if it helps hold the actual roof um, upward because that's one of the few things that actually hold the upper panel um, back seat sorry i don't want to get the window down same concept so the speakers that are back there you can kind of see right there um I cut out a template that went all the way across from the original one, cut out new ones in steel, and then put in six by nine speakers, bed line, sound dead in the same concept. So it's actually stout. Um, let's see, I could probably show you here. Sorry, I'm 
not using a camera stand or a jig today. Always keep coolant with you, because obviously. But so those back panels are solid metal underneath here. Which is nice, helps with the sound from the outside, because again, that part that's rusted out, you would have access to right here on the other side. So it helps with the sound deadening and everything. Um, I think that's about it that we got going on here. It does have a new exhaust that I had done originally in the shop. They bent and did the front part. Obviously you can see their welds and then it transitions into my exhaust and you can see my welds. Um, <laughs> drops down right over the axle. So the rear axle, again, you know, I'm gonna stretch. I'm super excited. I have them sitting in the back. I'll go show them here in a minute. Um, but yeah, realistically, I'm just trying to get it fun for daily driving. I've been daily driving about 70 miles a day for about a week now with no issues. My radiator started dripping, so that's part of the reason why I need a new one. And uh, so I am doing coils in the rear. I have new mounts and everything. I'm actually gonna be using TJ style mounts for S, um, that weld to make the coils sit up and down from our tech industries. So they'll be able to fit right on top of here, mount directly onto the axle. I'll figure out shocks as I get there. Probably just gonna be outboarded here and run down. But that's about it, y'all. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, comment it down below. I hope that was not too miserable. It's super bright out here today, so I haven't really been able to see my screen. Um, I know it's bouncy. Um, but I hope that helps answer anyone's questions. Um, oh, one thing people always ask about, sorry, um, is the three link. So I made a bracket right there. That's kind of got a weird shape. You can kind of see the base to get as much contact with the body, with the frame as possible. Then an upper control arm that's at like a, I think it was a 13 or 14 degree angle to run to the one at the axle. And then it's braced in with the lower control arm, so they kind of help go off of each other. But that's it, y'all. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I'll see you in the next video. Otherwise.